starting to get into some complicated stuff um, and, and that's why it doesn't seem straightforward plus I think the the messages we, we get about genetics the way we think genetics works it suddenly doesn't work so well when you're looking at these things but really this is a, a better better way of looking at things a bit like when you did um, the lac operon stuff which hopefully you have done by now and you found out that there are genes and parts of genes that actually aren't making proteins or polypeptides they're making something that switches something else on and a lot of um, genes are actually involved in that, they're involved in switching other things on rather than making a specific um, part of the body. Um, so anyway, let's have a quick look at this. So homeobox genes are sometimes also known as Hox genes, okay, as in homeobox genes, um, are genes that are responsible for um, determining the body pattern of an organism. So if you take something simple like a, a worm, a segmented worm, I think of an earthworm if you like, uh, its body is in the sections. You know, if you think of something a little bit more complicated, like um, say a centipede, and I'm <laughs> making this very, very simple. A centipede isn't a worm with legs, so you know. You know. But the idea is that um, each segment of its body is. It's got some segments do the same thing. Some segments, like the head and you know the, the end bit, whatever's at the end of a centipede, would be a bit different. Then we start to get things like insects with the the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. You know, the, the legs would come off. Uh, the thorax, if we've got wings and so on. Um, obviously, in a human, it, it's not quite as as clear because the the thorax and the abdomen tend to blend together. But we are still actually, you know, the, the head's clearly a separate thing, isn't it? Um, even though I'm drawing a neck on this poor person. Um, the idea that organisms are um, organised into separate regions uh, runs all the way through, and homeobox genes seem to be quite common, or they are quite common, right the way through. So even if you're looking at um, an insect, you can put homeobox genes in from um, a completely different organism, like um, you know, a frog or something, and they would still continue doing exactly the same job. So it's an example of things that are conserved between um, organisms. And it's a great example of um, the, the evolutionary history, and the, 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 the commonality of DNA. So these genes themselves tend to come in clusters called Hox clusters. Um, and interestingly, you have, I'm, I'm gonna simplify this enormously here. Um, let's just say that this is a section of DNA. Um, and here's, so I'm, I'm not drawing out like A, C, T, G, A, like that. I'm just gonna imagine this is one gene here and here's another gene. These ones might be to do with the head these ones are to do with the thorax and I'll have a couple at the end which are to do with the um, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen, okay? And the way I've drawn it is roughly what's going on. You, they actually come in the order that they, they appear on, um, sort of in the body, you know, they're not all just mixed up like we maybe think that genes are sometimes, okay? So if you're wondering what's in the middle here, you know, what's these bits? Um, well, it is DNA, it's still in there, but it's not necessarily a coding um, part of DNA, non-coding DNA. It's got a role, but we're not too worried about it. We, we get these um, genes in little clusters, okay? And the, um, in things like Drosophila fruit flies, they, they only have, um, I can't remember now, it's one or two clusters. I should look it up, I've got the, the book in front of me rather than... Uh, Drosophila two, yeah, two, <laughs> two clusters, uh, we're in humans. A uh, bit of the vertebrates, four clusters, and humans have got sort of variation of between nine and eleven genes, whatever it is. Um, so humans would have these clusters, and, and they're on specific chromosomes later on. Now, the, the confusing part is there's something called a homeobox. Now, you might say, "Hang on, we've just done homeobox. We've done homeobox genes." Well, a homeobox is something slightly different. It is a section within, so let's imagine it's within that particular, I'm going to magnify that homeobox gene there, and within there we've got a section of DNA called the homeobox. Um, and this is something that codes for a polypeptide that's about, this is about 180 um, base pairs long, um, it makes a, a polypeptide, so 180 base pairs, and that's going to be 60 amino acids, and it's going to be 60 triplets or 60 codons, so 60 amino acids long. And what this does is 
this little polypeptide it makes is necessary for the homeobox genes to work. So the homeobox is found within these clusters and it's necessary for the homeobox gene um, to be expressed. What these homeobox genes make um, is, is a polypeptide that will turn on other genes. Okay, that's what it's going to do. It's going to turn on other genes. Just like, if you think back, well, similar to the idea of the lac operon, these things switch other genes on. The homeobox is necessary for the homeobox gene to be switched on. And again, this is very well conserved throughout all organisms. This same um, homeobox uh, amino acid se uh, sequence comes up again and again and again. Now, uh, these things um, sometimes referred to as morphogens, the, um, the proteins that they make. Morphogens, morph means um, shape, gen meaning making, generate, genesis. So the shape, making the shape, making the shape of something. Okay, And very often they're proteins. However, in humans, um, there's a paragraph at the bottom of, of the double green page. It talks about retinol or retinoic acid. I think it might even say you know, retinoic acid. It might say retinol. I can't be able to pull it out from there. Um, this is related or derived from uh, vitamin A, so you might know it in, in terms of retinol. Um, you know, people talking about vitamin A being good for your eyes. This is actually what it produces, retinoic acid, and, and it acts as a. Um, it can act to switch these things. It can act as a morphogen, basically. Um, and what these things, what morphogens do in the body, they tend to work in concentration gradient. I should say as well. Um, the, the polypeptides made from uh, these homeobox genes sometimes repress a gene, sometimes they activate it. it. Depends on what gene it is. They can do two things. Again, this should be fairly familiar as an idea from the lac operon. You can switch things on or off by binding to, to particularly the promoter regions. Um, but these things work in, in concentration gradient. So if you can imagine. Um, well, if we take a cell for example, you may not be aware of this, but cells actually have up and down, or they're polar. Okay, they have a top and a bottom, if you like. Um, and RNA actually gets moved. Let's have that as one lump of RNA, one strand of RNA, and that's another one. So they're making some proteins up here. So there's lots of protein made up there. There's a gradient. There's more up here. Now, there's, there's more near that bit of RNA than there is as it spreads out. And that's when you end up getting different things. That's how a cell knows. It doesn't know, but it works on this chemical basis. Um, and when you do the stuff on apoptosis or apoptosis, um, the idea of your fingers, um, you know, why do your fingers suddenly stop growing there? It's a concentration gradient of chemicals. The further out it spreads, you get less and less and less until you get to a point where the concentration gradient is so low that the, the cells at the end of your fingers, if you like, um, are, are not affected by it anymore, they're not going to keep growing. And finally, just to add to this, I wanted to change the paper as right now. Um, three examples of homeobox genes, three different types. What's called maternal, um, and that really determines the front and back of an organism, or anterior and posterior. Okay, it's easy if you're thinking about, you know, there, there's our insects again, here's the anterior end, the head end, there's the posterior end. Um, that would be the dorsal surface and the ventral surface. Sometimes it's awkward when you think of humans because um, we've kind of stood up that way and yet the dorsal is still the back and so our anterior is um, not always as clear. But anyway, um, that's what the maternal ones do. Um, the segmentation genes determine um, the position of each segment. You know, why is the body, the, the thorax there? Why not have your thorax at the front, then your head? And then, you know, it, it, well, it wouldn't work. The, the, the embryo would never develop. And of course, you can make these mutations happen, but um, it, it's never going to develop. The homeotic selector determines what each section does. And this is the, the classic one with Drosophila, where we get make legs start growing out the head rather than and then the antenna, the antennapedia. Um, so messing around with these homey box, the, particularly the homeotic selectors, is the ones that tend to start putting things in the wrong place. I suppose the segmentation one, um, I'm just guessing at this, um, but when you get things like multiple um, thoraxes, I would guess it is a mutation of segmentation. Don't hold me to that one. If you want to look at them and correct me, be my guest.